In this video, we are going to look into the string data type in particular and how we create strings and how we obtain strings from various sources. So let's open a new text file, a new notebook file, and rename it in the text IPython notebook because we are modeling textual data here. So we have seen a couple of times that using the double quote notation creates text objects. So if I write in there, for example, random text and execute that, Python understands it. And the reason why is because that is the so-called literal notation to create text objects, to string so-called string objects. So whenever Python sees um, the double quotes, um, a starting double quote and an ending double quote here, it knows that everything that is in between is part of the text that is to be modeled. However, um, the representation of the object that is created um, below the cell has a single quote. So you may wonder what is the difference here? Well, there is no real difference. So double and single quotes are perfect synonyms. So you can use either double quotes or single quotes. You have to be consistent, but both are perfect synonyms. So um, which one uh, do I personally uh, use? I personally prefer the double quote notation for the main reason that um, here it is clear that this is a string, a textual object without any characters inside. If you use here instead, the single quote notation, then maybe you can confuse that with one double quote. And if you work all day with code, then um, you don't like uh, confusing, um, yeah, confusing things on the screen. So I prefer double quotes. And also a major reason why the double uh, quote notation, I guess, is more popular in recent years in the Python community is because there is a very popular um, code formatting tool. So a tool that automatically automate that automates the formatting of your source code, and it is called Black. And uh, it's called black because it goes back to uh, a quote um, that uh, was uh, given by Henry Ford. He said, you can have cars. So Henry Ford, the car manufacturer, so he said, you can have the car in any color as long as it's black. So in other words, there's only one, one color to choose from. And in a similar spirit, the black tool, the black code formatting tool gives you back your Python source code in one and one only way, okay? So here we have, and, it pr and this tool simply prefers or uses double quotes instead of single quotes. That is why it is uh, very popular in recent years. So let's uh, check quickly the type of that. And it's of course also string um, as we could have guessed. And now um, what are further things that we should know about uh, when talking about textual data? So let's uh, go ahead with another example, a bit uh, more complex example, but not too hard. So first I make a markdown cell here and let's write a quote by Albert Einstein. So Einstein said, comma, quote, if you can't explain it, you don't understand it, period, and quote ending. And I hope uh, in my videos that I kind of um, can uh, explain uh, what uh, I want to explain. Otherwise, this would be an indication that I don't understand a couple of things. And probably some of the videos um, yeah, are a bit hard to understand because I still need uh, to get more feedback from, from you um, in what uh, are better ways to talk about concept. But let's continue here with this quote. So let's say uh, we want to model this quote here, this entire sentence here in memory, in our computer's memory. How could we do that? So let's uh, simply go ahead and first of all, copy paste it. And let's try to use the double quote notation to create a text object. So let's simply paste the sentence in between. And we can already see with the weird coloring here that uh, we have red here and black here, but this is an um, indication that Jupyter Lab does for us that Python will probably have a hard time understanding that. So let's uh, quickly run the cell and indeed we get a syntax error. So syntax error means that Python cannot even read what we are giving it. And the reason why is because it thinks that um, the, the first double quote here indicates the beginning of a string literal, and then anything that comes after it should be part of the string's value. And then the second double quote here is indicating the end of the string. However, it is not really the end. The line goes on, and that is the trouble here. So what can we do here is we can give a hint to Python that the second double quote here should not be the end of the string. So how do we do that? We use the so-called a so-called escape character, and in Python this is the backslash. So backslash quotes basically means that the quotes here have a meaning other than the end um, of the of the string, and in in general, 
the escape sequence, so the, the escape character, me, uh, implies that the, the one character following has a meaning other than its literal meaning. Okay, so in this case, it simply means put a quote there as, the, as part of the value of the string object. And of course, we will do that here as well for the second uh, double quote inside um, the sentence. And now if I uh, run the cell, it works. Um, Python understands it. We don't get a syntax error. And uh, what now Python gives me back is it gives me back um, a representation of the object that is now in memory, but it defaults to single quotes. Just So just like above, um, whenever I enter something with double quotes, Python usually defaults to single quotes. There are a couple of exceptions from this rule, but usually we get back a notation with si enclosing single quotes. And uh, Python does that here as well. And now what we see in this notation is now the single quotes here are escaped. So backslash single quote means we escape the single character and the double quotes, of course, do not need to be uh, escaped here because uh, Python can clearly understand that if we begin the string object with a single quote, then double quote is simply part of the value of the, of the string. So let's copy paste everything here into another code set just to prove the point that um, the representation that we see here is a so-called literal notation, literal meaning we can simply copy paste it as it is into another code cell and it works. It is a valid Python code. So this creates another object of the same with the same value. Okay, so now you may be confused. You now see that below the code cell, we have these weird characters that we actually don't want to be part of the text that we are modeling. So the thing is, the backslashes here they are only part of the syntax in the source code to make this happen. They are not part of the semantic value of the object um, that we create. So remember uh, back in chapter one, there was a video uh, that I did on um, object orientation and there are th three properties every object has and one of them being um, the, the semantic value. And the semantic value is basically what the object means to us as humans. And to us humans, the backslash, um, the escape character, the backslash here has really no meaning. It's really just syntax to not uh, cause an error here in Python. So what that means is if I take, for example, um, this uh, entire piece of code here, which is valid Python code, and I put it in between the, as the argument to the print function between the parentheses, then we are now printing out only the value of, this, of the text object, of the string object. And now what we see is the weird backslashes, they are not part here, okay? And also as a minor detail, there is no red number seven here, but if I go back up here, there is a blue five and a red five and a blue six and a, and a, and a red six, but here is only a blue seven. The reason why is these two cells, they give me back some object, some reference to an object in memory. And this cell here does not, because the print function has no return value, it returns none. Instead, the print function has a side effect, and the side effect is, in this case, it prints something to a screen, and it just happens to be both below the code cell, right? So up here, we have a so-called literal notation that we can copy paste into a code cell, and then it's valid Python code. This is what usually the text representation of an object in memory is. Instead, if we simply copy paste the value of the string, then I get a syntax error again. So the value of a text object is not necessarily a valid Python code, or, or it's not necessarily valid as a Python expression. And uh, what the text representation of an object is that it's valid Python, we will see um, very later, very much later on in this course, uh, when we talk in chapter 11 um, about classes and uh, how we can design our own data types. And we will also, among others, talk about the text representation of objects and the built-in objects, the string object in this case, they also have a text representation. And in this case, Python's text representation defaults um, to the single quotes. Okay, so note that the value, of, um, the value of a string is not necessarily what you can read here um, in the text representation of, of a string. Okay. So let's go ahead and see further escape sequences and a little bit of more syntax before we can uh, go on with other stuff. So let's say um, you want to go on and you want to write a list of things and you want to separate that into several lines that you, you want to see. So let's write here a list of colon and let's now break the line and say 
step one, break the line and say step two, and let's do it one more time and say step, step three. So let's say I want to model a text object that contains a list of things, right? And um, yeah, I just want to model that as a string. So let's do that with the double code notation. And again, I get a syntax error and it says EOL, which is short for end of line, um, while scanning string literal. So the end of line is simply here because we have a new line character. So I break, I'm breaking the line right here and that is uh, the end of the line. And Python, for syntactic reasons, when we start a string using either a single quote or a double quote, um, does not expect that. It cannot handle that. So it expects that everything, the entire string, as we see, must be on one line in the source code. Okay. And so how can we fix that? So there is an easy fix. And the easy fix is to simply use the so-called triple double quote notation, or maybe simply triple quote notation for short, which we have seen previously when we define when we define functions and we use the triple um, quote notation there to implement the doc strings, right? That document the input output relationship that is behind the functions that we have implemented. So if I now execute the code, now I don't get a syntax error. So instead Python understands it. However, as we see, Python gives me back a, a text representation where we have these backslash n's in there, right? And a backslash n is simply an escape sequence that indicates a new line, okay? So just like backslash uh, single quote or backslash double quote means put a double or single quote within, um, within the text, um, the, the backslash n simply means break the line, but only this regards only the value of the text object. So where do we see that? Well, if I go ahead and I copy paste that into a new cell and let's say I pass that as the only argument to the print function. Now I see a list of a list of step one, step two, step three on four different lines. Okay. So now this string, which is a so-called multi-line string, is actually shown correctly as we would expect it. Okay. So again, this here is just the text representation of the string object in memory that we can use to simply go ahead and copy paste that. And we see that we get back in this valid Python code. So we get back another object, which happens to have the same value. And of course, if we use the print function and we go ahead and we print um, this um, on, and we copy paste in this uh, one line notation here with the backslash ends, then we also get back exactly the same output as above. Okay, so we really have to get used to the idea that the way text is portrayed in syntax, the text representation, that's the formal word for it, is different from the semantic meaning of what, the, what, is, what is inside the text, what is being modeled by the text. This is what we would see if, um, as you know, printed out when we use um, the print function, for example, but we could also uh, do different stuff, right? We don't have to simply print out uh, to, in this case, below the cell, but we could also print or write to some file, right? And maybe when you write to some file later on, you also want to break a line in there. And uh, this only regards um, this file then in which, into which you write. It does not regard the object as it exists inside the Python process, okay? So get used to that. Um, uh, it looks maybe a bit weird for now, but uh, you will get used to that. Uh, it's not too hard. Okay, so backslash n is just another, um, another escape character. Okay, so what else do you need to know about the triple double quote notation? Well, obviously you could also use a triple single quotes. So if we say, let's say A, B, C, if I um, enter that, um, we get back backslash n a backslash n b and so on. Why do I get a leading and a ending backslash n? Well, obviously we have a line break here. So right here is one line break. And also down here we have a line break. This is why we have the backslash n's here and here. And this is why you often in code see um, simple dot strip here. So we have seen the, the strip method before. Um, I think the last time was in the video when we covered um, modeling interactive games, guessing games. So um, what does the strip method do? The strip method simply removes um, leading and trailing white space. So this is some, something that you often see in source code. Um, right, and now you could actually go ahead and you could probably put in some more empty lines. This will uh, basically not um, make uh, the value, uh, will not change the value in any way. And now you can format everything nicely in terms of text.
but the backslash ends between the a, b, and c, they will not go away, of course, of, right? They are, of course, part of the value of the text object. Okay, so uh, this is um, everything that we, you need to know about the so-called different kinds of literal notations. So uh, there are two kinds of literal notations. It is the, thi the single quote and the double quote. This is one uh, kind of literal notation and the triple quote notation for so-called multi-line strings. Um, this is another uh, built-in literal. Of course, you must not forget we can use the str, the str co uh, constructor. So let's say if I pass uh, seven to the str constructor, I get back seven as a string object. Um, that is almost trivial by now. Then of course, um, just as a reminder, there is a built-in function called input, which takes as an argument a prompt, which, is, which happens to be a string object. So maybe I say, enter something. And if I do that, then a text box opens and um, I can enter text. And then the entire, the, the return value of the input function is simply the text object. But as we see, it's a proper text object using single quote notation here, okay? And if I go ahead and uh, let's say I put in uh, one single quote as the, as the, as the text, or maybe I, I say, um, you don't know that, then what I get back is a literal notation using double quotes because Python is smart enough to know that I don't have to backslash that here, escape that, if I use double quotes instead of single quotes. So the problem with the sentence above was that we have both single and double quotes inside, but um, if we only have one of them, then uh, Python defaults to the other one to use as the delimiters here. Okay, so input function is also a source of how we can obtain um, string objects. Let's look at another very important source uh, where we can uh, obtain uh, string objects. So what we see here on the left-hand side, I created a file which is called lorem ipsum.txt. I can open that with a double click. And this is simply a file holding textual data. Okay. And um, so now I show you how you can open a file um, in Python. We do that using the built-in function called open. And the open function takes as its argument, a string as its first argument, a string with a path to the file. So let's put there simply lorem ipsum.txt. And now if I enter, if I execute this uh, cell, what I get back is a so-called text IO wrapper object. Okay, so this is a special object of type text IO wrapper. So this may be a bit weird for now, but let's uh, store the object in a variable, let's call it file. And now you also, you already may guess uh, what uh, the IO wrapper object is. Well, it is really uh, a model of, you know, of a file. Right, so, um, and uh, how does this work? So maybe I'll show you a little diagram in uh, memory of what happened in memory as I executed the cell. So when I run the open uh, function, then what happens, Python will create a new object and let's uh, put here as the type of the object, simply IO wrapper, IOW maybe. And uh, it has of course a couple of ones and zeros in here. And what the ones and zeros here do is, they do the following. Let's assume that this is the border from uh, the operating system to the Python process. So this is now OS world, the operating system on your computer. And the operating system not only handles the um, random access memory, the so-called RAM memory, the short, uh, basically the short-term memory of your computer, it also handles um, what happens on disk. So let's assume somewhere the operating system gives you access to a file that lives on your computer's hard drive. And the file contains, contains, for example, textual data. So let's maybe call it txt something. Okay, it's a text file. And what this uh, IO wrapper object does, it is really just a pipeline that goes from inside the Python process to the outside world. And this way, the Python process um, can look into the outside world and obtain data. In, in particular here, it can load in data from a file on disk, okay? So this is what happens in memory. And in uh, the example, I gave it the variable uh, file. So we also should put the variable file here, okay? So this is um, what has happened so far in memory when I execute this line here, the, the line open and then a path. So why is, um, opening a file is so weird. So the reason uh, for that is I haven't so far 
opened any or I haven't so far read any um, of the content of the file yet. So the only thing I have done is I have created this pipe to the outside world, which gives me access to a file on disk. However, I have not yet read in anything from, from disk so far. So how can I do that in Python? So I could do that. One way of doing that is I could simply loop over the file object here. So I could say for line in file, and let's simply say print line. And this will show all the text that we just saw in the um, text file that I opened in a, in a different tab here. So this is now one way of how to load in data from a text file. So you may wonder why, why do we have to go so far to, do, to make that happen? Why couldn't we just load in all the text data right here in, at once? Well, the reason is quite simple. Usually, so this here is the modeling the Python process's memory and anything, any program that is running on your computer, so-called processes, they only occupy um, basically the space inside your computer's short-term memory. Okay, this is the memory that gets erased when you restart the computer. Right here, I'm basically saying, okay, this is, uh, this is supposed to be the disk. So this is basically what is not erased when you uh, restart your computer. And now the problem is this. The disk space usually these days is goes into the terabytes already or at least gigabytes. So in other words, the space here in terms of how big the space is, is very big. Your computer's working memory, the RAM memory is usually a lot smaller compared to the disk drive, right? So RAM is usually very expensive. Hard disks are usually very cheap. So therefore it could happen. It could be the case that the file that we want to read is simply too big for our computer's random access memory. Therefore, the Python uh, core developers, they designed the open function such that we only get a so-called proxy to the outside world. And then this proxy here allows us to obtain, for example, a line by line. Okay, so we are only reading in a line at a time and we do that by iteration. Okay, so um, in a previous video, when we talked about uh, the difference between abstract and concrete data types, I introduced the term iterable. An iterable is any object over which I can loop for example, with a for loop. And obviously the file object here, I can loop over it. So what do we learn from that? Well, we learn from that, that file objects are modeled as some sort of a proxy to the outside world and we can iterate over them. So they are iterables, okay? And um, so we are iterating over them using the for loop and we're simply uh, looping um, one line at a time. And now it happens that um, the iteration variable, the line called line here, also exists after the for loop is done and it is still set to the value of the last line. So let's do that. Let's look at that. And we, as we see, it is still set to the last, uh, to the value of the last line in the text file. What we also see here is a backslash n. So uh, every line in the text file that we just opened ends with a new line. So maybe I open the text file one more time here in the tab. So we see that the end of almost every line here is simply a new line. So these, the, the new line characters, they are also read in somehow. And this is what the backslash n does. And we have seen above when I print it out, when I say here print line, the backslash n, the, these special characters, they go away when printed out. However, we see that the variable line points to a object of type string. So let's prove that it's a, that it's a type string. So type of line is of course string. And what we see from that is that every line in the file, when we loop over it, becomes a string object. So this is just another way of how to obtain string objects. So above, we looked at the way to use a constructor uh, function or to use literals. And now we, um, by opening a file, we have a third way of how to obtain string objects in a Python process. Okay, so before we end this video, um, there is one thing that I, I want to uh, get across. So what we did now, we looped over the file object. So we looped over the proxy, right? Over um, this um, proxy object here. And what the proxy does is it really, it, it, so I, I, I draw it here as a, as a pipe to the outside world, but what this proxy really is in a bit more detail is like a cursor. So in other words, at first the cursor looks at the very first spot. So at the very first character inside the file. And now if I make one iteration in the for loop, what happens is, this uh, cursor will move, so let's do it like this, will simply move to the second line, right? And so on. And as we, you, as we loop through the for loop that we have in the, in the example, at some point we reach the end of the file. And that means our cursor 
that goes from the proxy object is now at the end. And now one thing you need to understand is, if let's say we go ahead and we go ahead and loop one more time over the file object, we get no output. Why? Well, the reason is because the cursor does not automatically move forward. So there are two ways of, uh, of solving this problem. One, there is a method on the file object which simply would put the, um, the cursor back to the beginning or to any other uh, spot where we want to put it. Another way of uh, doing it is to simply create another proxy object, which then automatically is started by pointing at the beginning of a file. Okay, so when we uh, loop over files, we must forget, uh, we must always remember that um, the file object is a proxy to the outside world and it not only points at some file, but it points at some spot inside this file in particular, and it always remembers that. And this way we can basically move through a file line by line or one character at a time or however we want to move. Okay, and that is uh, how the, this proxy object works. And now there's one more thing I want you to understand. So for technical reasons, any operating system um, can only obtain so many um, open files at the same time. Usually it's around about 1000. So let's use the file object here that we still have and let's call or let's look at an attribute using the dot operator. So I use file dot and let's use the uh, closed attribute and the closed attribute gives us back the value false. So the closed attribute tells us that the file is still open and we shouldn't do that. So when we are done reading a file, we should close the file because again, for technical reasons, your operating system can only um, handle so and so many um, open files at the same time. And so whenever you are done with some, some file, the good practice is to simply close it. How can you do that? Well, you can simply go ahead and say file.close and now we are calling the close method on the file object. Before that, we uh, we access the closed attribute on the file object. And now we are calling the close method on the file um, at, uh, object. If I do that, and of course it does not take an, an, a, an argument, it, it takes no argument, we're calling it like that. And now if I go ahead and ask Python, hey, is the file closed? It will now tell me yes, okay? And now if you go back and we try to loop over the, the file object one more time, I now even get a value error. So what did the, the calling the close function do? Well, what it really did is this cursor that points to the outside world will now simply be removed. So the, the file object here, the proxy object is still existent in our computer's memory, but the, the cursor going to the outside world is now removed. So if we try to now do anything with this object here, then uh, we will get an error message. In particular here, we will see IO operation on a closed file. Basically, this means the file is closed. We can't do anything with it anymore. So now, now this uh, file object is totally worthless, right? So the only thing that we could do now is we could simply create another one using the um, open uh, function again. And now we can basically loop over everything as before and properly close it. There is a, a, a nice syntax that we have not yet seen in this course which is the so-called with statement. So with is basically what we call a context manager. And uh, let's um, do that to end the video. Let's open the file, but not simply by using the open function just like that, but by using the open function together with the with statement. So we say with open, and now we will say as file. And now what I will do is, I will go ahead and I will say for line in file, print line, okay? So this is the same code that we executed above here, but now I'm executing this code as we see in the context of the with statement. This is why we call this the context manager or a context manager because um, the code block here is indented. So it's one level of indentation. And that means this code block here, the for loop is basically executed in the context of this context manager, right? And for the open function, the context manager has only one purpose and the purpose is to automatically close the file so that you don't forget it. So if I go after the with statement and if I ask Python, hey, is the file closed? Just like this. So we know that this is not, this code here is not inside the context anymore. It is after the context because it's not indented. So if I execute this code here, now I will see all the, all the content of the text file. And also we get back true here because um, the file is now closed. Okay, so it's automatically closed. We don't have to manually close it. So that's a nice trick to know. 
and we will see a couple of other examples of the with statement in future videos. For now, simply treat it as you can understand it here. It is simply executing some code in its context. And when uh, concerning the open function, it is simply uh, closing the file automatically so that you don't have to do it, nothing else, okay? So it's the same as above, but we don't have to manually do it. Okay, so we ha have learned quite a lot here in uh, how to create different ways of creating text data, um, different uh, other sources of how to obtain um, textual data, in particular the um, input function that gives you back text object and also the open function. Um, that gives you back a file object, which then gives us back um, string objects. So these are various ways um, of how to deal with uh, textual data. And also remember that th there is a difference between the syntax of a text um, object here to create it, and also its value. And its value is the thing that we see when we print it out. Okay, so uh, there are a couple of subtleties in this video that you should uh, understand. So in the next video, we will see how um, the string data type is also um, has also some nice abstract properties that the list data type has. It's very much related to the list data type, and uh, we will do so uh, in the next video. So I will see you then.